one of the most heartbreaking things in sports is to know an athlete has what it takes but does not have the funding to get there. You see the potential, but he or she is unable to get there. And there is a solution to this, helping find the cure to get those who have what it takes but just need a little bit of financial backing. John Norman, CEO of Evo, is with us to, to talk about this cutting-edge company that he has founded. I'm Brian Fenley, a national anchor at Fox Sports Radio. And and John, I've seen what you guys are doing and how you are growing, bringing in athletes from combat sports, from tennis to golf and, and motorsports as well. And how are you enriching their lives by what you're doing? Well, you hit it right on the head. It is absolutely heartbreaking to see an athlete and that's really what motivated me to to come up with this concept to begin with it just happened to be in the in the auto racing um uh, you know part of the business and then i really immediately branched out and found that this is the same story that's been happening for you know decades and it's it's all about um the money at the end of the day, certainly the talent is, you have to have the talent regardless. So, you know, money can only get you so far, but if you don't have the money along with the talent, it is very, very difficult to compete at the elite level of these sports. And the, the creation of Evo was really to be a benefit to the, these athletes that just, you know, they're born to do this and they will give 110% if they had the opportunity and we're trying to give them that opportunity. You can check out the website, evoinvest.com. You have a team that you work with. It is ever so growing. And on the golf front, John, I, I noticed that you have recently signed on with, with, your first golfer, Stephen Cupcho, and this was part of a nationwide search. And what was it about him that you felt that your resources would be beneficial to him? And, and certainly your investors would benefit from having him on the team as well. Yeah, certainly. Well, as you can imagine, there are a lot of athletes and in particular golfers out there that um, are getting discouraged because they are um, out there trying to make it onto the PGA Tour. And now there's a, uh, a process. It's, it's, it's quite difficult to explain in one little session, but there's many ways to make it to the PGA. But at the end of the day, you have to perform and you have to perform consistently. And they are these golfers are competing against the golfers that are on the PGA and the average golfer on the PGA tour is making about a million bucks. Um, and they're not even in the top 50 of the, the, the sport, you know, but they can afford to have the best trainers, the best nutritionists, the best coaching, the best putting coach, swing coach, all these people, there's a whole team around people in individual sports. And people think, oh, it's just you and your golf clubs and you go out there and you hit it. It's technology. It's amazing. These vests that they put on and they, they swing and then they analyze their swing in 3D and they find out, you know, the little tiny things that can make them better. It's not big changes. It's always there's something little between the good and the great. And the people that are already there have the, the capability because they have the earnings, you know, the capital to do it. And that keeps them there. It's the guys that are right on the bubble. They're right on the edge. They haven't, they know they have the talent, but they don't have the technology and the coaching that gets them to perform at the elite level. And that's where we're, we come in. And Stephen Cupcho is a good example of that person who has gone, went through all the uh, assessments that we did and, and looked at his swing and had the different swing coaches look at him. But I think most importantly, at the end of the day, even with all the athletes that are out there, it's, it's what's up in your head that matters. 
You know, if, if you don't have what it takes mentally and that you can handle the pressure, you can handle the workload and you have that just deep down drive, then it's, it's not someone that we, if they just had the talent and that was it, that person would not become an Evo athlete. So it's, it's Steven really had his head together and that's what really um, attracted me to him. Well, a lot of people are attracted to you in the motorsports world as well. Saw a recent partnership with Don Schumacher Racing, also working with Andretti and Rossi and, and, and beyond and beyond. You're growing that format. What is it about you that they find a liking to and why in the motorsports world that they have really taken into your vision? Well, within the motorsports world, I have had a presence there for the last uh, five years. And I really got introduced to the motorsports when, when my son, Ryan, who's now 23 years old and races for Brian Herta Racing, but we spent three years on Team Andretti. So Ryan raced with Andretti. We got to know Michael and the, the entire team, the whole uh, company, essentially. And really there's nobody that's better suited. They're in all the different motorsports categories out there. They're in the open wheel IndyCar, you know, they, they're in Formula E, they're in IMSA now, they, they cover everything. So if there's an up and coming driver that is young and is, you know, making some noise on some level below the top level, they're going to know and they're going to be, hey, John, let's go take a look at this guy, see if he's a candidate for it being an Evo driver. So it's great having uh, both Don Schumacher within the drag racing and NHRA to uh, Andretti. And um, we're growing that and we're going to even very soon have some fun announcements in some of the other series as well. So. Oh, I can't wait. Looking forward to, to hearing all that. I'm sure a lot of that will be posted on your website, evoinvest.com. We are joined by the founder, John Norman. I'm Brian Fenley, an anchor at Fox Sports Radio. So, John, when you think about the incentive for fans here, we were talking about motorsports, and certainly by them getting involved in this, the fans, it's sort of like upping their engagement to the sixth gear to take a, a term from motorsports. But what is the difference between a fan wanting to be a part of this? Because this is what it's all about is investing in these future athletes for tomorrow. And then you get a little bit of a payback or, or certainly some of the earnings in, in the 5%, what I've heard. It, it right. yeah. We yeah. can explain that. Oh, sorry. Go for so, it. Yeah. Continue, your, continue your, your, your thought there. Yeah. 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 So, so what's the difference between like when you're trying, when you're looking for folks and investors where they want to have, uh, it, like you said, it, it spawns more interest in the sport when you know, a, as a consumer that you have some tie to that athlete. So break it down as to like, you know, because uh, in, a, in, a, in a much different sense, the sport's gambling world they, they're trying to to get people to feel like well we can get their attention by them thinking that they have something riding on this game but what you do is so different and so what makes you more appeasable to the consumer in, in getting a from a, 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 a everyday fans perspective having that gratification of being connected to the sport well, I think there's a lot of similarities, but there's also a lot of uh, differences as well. When somebody bets on a game or somebody to win a race or something like that, it's, it's almost like you have that instant either gratification or fail. So if you're betting on, um, let's say, who's going to win a golf tournament or something like that, you're going to know really quick whether you won or you lost. And if you yeah. lost, your money's gone and you basically either on the next tournament or whatever, you have to invest again. The great thing about the program that we have at Evo is once you've invested in the company, 
it doesn't matter who our athletes are because you're not picking a specific athlete. You get a piece of the entire portfolio. Think of it like it's a mutual fund of a bunch of stocks in different companies. And essentially you're, you're trying to diversify your investment. So you know that some are gonna be good, some are not gonna perform well. Um, it's just the way business is, you know, you have winners and, and losers all the time. But the great thing about your investment in, e in Evo is you don't lose that investment. So if we have an athlete that was performing well and then he maybe plateaus and can't make it to that next level and we replace him, it's not like you, you have to invest more into the company because we've got a new athlete. You're always invested. So the great part is at the end of the year, we take the, the winnings that Evo gets from all the different athletes, put it in, into a pool, and then give a, a 5% uh, uh, distribution to all of the investors based on how many shares they, they own. Obviously, someone who invests $150 is going to have less of a participation than someone who invests one thousand five hundred dollars or so. And we have people, you know, right now investors, uh, way over a thousand investors. I think it was like six hundred or so thousand shares have been already purchased. So uh, we're super excited. The other great thing is, is that um, we're going to be launching now that we've got Stephen on board is the behind the scenes access. Wow. So we've just hired a, um, a media person, a producer to create content so we can deliver. You're not just waiting to see the next time Steven's in a tournament. You're gonna see how he's training because we don't just provide funding for these athletes. It's about giving them the best coach and giving them the best technology. Everything that the big boys have our guys are gonna have. So we wanna share that with our, our investors so they feel like they're part of that journey. We want them to understand this guy is working his butt off for us, the team, and we're all in it together. Yeah, what, what a great source of exposure for everyone by doing the behind the scenes stuff. I've got two more questions for you. We're joined by John Norman of Evo. As far as you hiring and expanding your own team, I, I saw you brought on the medical analyst with NBC Golf Channel and, and how you yeah. have been able to spread your wings in that realm. Uh, Dr. Doctor Ara Sapaya, what, what is it like to have a guy like that and, and, and beyond in, in spreading your wings and, and building up your credibility in that, in that realm? Well, from the very beginning, and this took, Evo took over two and a half years from concept to actually launching. And it was always from the beginning, my intent to surround me and our team with the best in the business and not settle for anything less. And because that's what it takes to be successful. And through my business career, which I've had, you know, been very fortunate to have a lot of successes, not in the sports market, but I've always dealt with the best in the business. So that's always been my approach. And um, Dr. Sean Drake, who's head of performance for us, worked closely with uh, Dr. Ara. And he said, there's, there's nobody better at analyzing all of the data that you can get nowadays from the technology and blood work and DNA. And, you know, if, if we can, you have to get that edge somewhere. And we want to make sure that our athletes are training the right way. And they're, as I learned, most importantly, recovering the right way, that the recovery is just as important as the training side. And Dr. Ara is gonna be a big, big help in helping us uh, create these programs for our athletes when you combine nutrition and the physical training. Now you are going to get the best out of these athletes thanks to, thanks to, to Dr. Ara's support along with the rest of your team. Final question for you. 
John, is what goes into the vigorous research of locating and pinpointing those in which you want to spotlight as far as these athletes? Because there are a lot out there who, who might fit the criteria and the qualifications, but what ends up being the final decision maker in putting a person ahead of another in being represented and being helped out by your company? Well, we have a very, from the beginning, we had a very um, uh, defined um, process for analyzing athletes and depending on which sport it was, let's say in, in racing, we have the, the racing board of advisors. So that's where we have Alexander Rossi and Peter Rossi and um, Michael Andretti and, and that whole team where they can look at the data and look at the performance, past performance and meet these individuals. And then we basically put it to a vote and we say, okay, these are the candidates that we feel will, would best fit the bill, so to speak. And it's, you know, starts maybe with 20, gets whittled down to 10, just like, you know, maybe on, a, you know, uh, the programs like Star Search or something, you know, where you have a whole bunch and you have to get down into the top finals. And then it really becomes um, a discussion and a debate about the, the benefits and the challenges of each di different person. And then we, we ultimately have to make a decision. Um, but I want to say is actually the more uh, investors that we have, the more people coming on board gives us the opportunity to have more athletes. So one has got a direct result to the other. If we don't have tens of thousands of, of investors eventually, then we, we will have a limited amount of capital to employ on the, the athletes. So it's on one hand, we have to promote the fact of investing and at the same time, we have this search going where I wish we could, you know, bring more people on board, but let's say we're only three months into the company and uh, we have to sort of invigorate or supercharge the investment process. As more investors come in, it's going to lead to your motto. Don't settle for good. It has to be great. That motto becomes yeah. even more and more likely. John Norman, Check out his website, Evo Invest, CEO there. They are cutting edge, and they have a lot of big things in their future, a lot of news, a lot of little teases there to what's coming up for your company. Excited to, to check those out, and I encourage everybody listening and watching this as well to feast your eyes on what this company is doing because it is ahead of the game, thanks in large part to the work of John Norman. I'm Brian Fenley. John, thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it and thrilled for your success and continued success as this continues to grow for your company. Great. Thank you very much.